50? Okay, I'll keep changing the rules, okay? So now we start counting down from 50. 50, 49, Now we'll start counting in twos. Okay, great. All right. So we are at 20. Let's start. 20? 18? Stop, stop. Okay. Ivaga, from, from 10, once we'll start counting by one downward. Can you see that word there in yellow? Books? And we are all from Pratham books. And we have come here to tell you a story from a book. Pull it, pull it out. What's this? Can anyone read the Hindi? Bahut acha. Ye hai hum Bharat ke bache. And you're all Bharat ke bache. Let's try reading it in another language. We, the children of India. One minute. Leela Seth. Il yellow kuti dare. Mrs. Leela Seth. She is very good. She is an excellent judge. She has retired Hello. as the Hello. Chief Justice of India. Who could it be? Is it someone there? Someone there? Someone there? Someone there? Here, okay. yeah, right here. So this is Justice Leela Seth, and she has written this book. We, the children of India. India. We, the children of India. Now, Bharatada Makkalu. And you can read it in many other languages. Whichever language you know, you can read it in that. Okay, now Mrs. Leela said, Justice Leela said, when I was your age or slightly older, actually, I read a book which was called The Children Who Became Famous. And one of those children was Leela said. So she was a child once, and after that, she grew up to become this very famous, very popular, very good, very efficient judge, and then the chief justice of one state, and then the High Court of India. Himachal Pradesh Chief Justice. Yeah, Delhi High Court Judge. Delhi High Court. Okay. So today, she's going to tell us how all this happened. And I'm going to ask her to take over from you. Please do ask her any question about the Constitution, except the spelling of Constitution, because that you know. All right. So who formed the Constitution? What is it? What are rules? Any question you want to ask, Please feel free, put your hand up and ask her. Okay? So let's give a very warm welcome to uh, Justice Leela Seth here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can you all hear me at the back? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So I'm very happy to be with all of you children because I love children. And I'm a grandmother. Do you know how old I am? Come on, one guess. How much? So have you got a grandmother who's 84? Have you got a great grandmother who's 84? Okay, so here I am, but I love children, so that's why I'm young. Now, you know when I was your age, India was not a free country. You know that? The, who was ruling us? The British, that's right. How did we become free? Gandhiji started a movement and all the people started a movement which was called Quit India. Told the British, go away. Quit India. Hmm? And we had a procession, but we were very peaceful. We didn't fight. We didn't beat up anybody. We just used ahimsa. You know what ahimsa is? Non-violent protest. We used to go on the streets. People would lie on the railway line and say, the train will go, won't go, Babas, we want you to go. So eventually, the British left. Then what were we going to do? Because when the British were there, I was a small girl, and we used to go to some park, and it would be written there, dogs and Indians not allowed. It was our country, but we're not allowed to go in there. There were jobs which we couldn't do. 
there were schools we couldn't go to. You can go to any school you want, can't you? Yeah. So then, once they left, we had to decide how we want to be ruled. What do we want to do? So we, when, when did we get our independence? Which day? 15th of August, yes. Now, do you know there's another very special day in the year? What is that day? Republic Day. You know what Republic Day is? Do you celebrate Republic Day? Which day is it? 26th of January. You know why it's very special? Okay, I will tell you. We got our independence in 1947, 15th of August. That's right. Now, we have to decide how we want to be governed. The British have gone. Where should, what should we do? So we first gave ourselves a flag. You know what the flag looks like, the Indian flag? Yeah. What does it have? Yeah. What color is on top? Yeah. Orange. Orange, yeah, saffron. Then? Yeah. And then? Yeah. Green. And what's in the center? Yeah. The uh, chakra. That's very good. Now we said we have to get ourselves a special animal. What animal do we have? That's right. We gave ourselves a special bird. That's right. We gave ourselves a special flower. Yes. Then we gave ourselves something which is called uh, the emblem. Do you know what the emblem is? Yes. And what is written underneath? What is written underneath? Satyave Jayate. Truth shall prevail. Always truth will prevail. Always be honest. Yes? That's it. And then we gave ourselves a big book. What is that book? The Constitution of India. In that is written the rules of everything that happens and how you are going to be governed. You know what govern means? Like in a school, the school has certain rules. These were India rules, rules for India. How you will be governed, there will be judges, there will be, there'll be government servants, there will be ministers, all this kind of thing. And who is going to bring them in? Who is going to decide who will be a who will be a minister or a member of parliament? You. That time it was 21. Now it's 18. As you grow up, you will decide, because we are a democratic country. You know what is the difference between a monarchy and a democracy? Yes. A king or a queen governs it. The monarch governs it. Huh? And a democracy is where the people govern. Who will be your member of parliament? And if you don't like them, after five years, I can throw them out. Get a new lot in. So you are very important. You are the most important person in this country because you are a citizen. And a citizen decides what is going to happen. So remember that always. What you decide, what you want, is what will happen to this country. You are the future. Remember that. So then you can do a vote. You know what a vote is? Yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you vote? Um, actually, they give you the type of mark in your... Yeah. yeah, but that actually the idea of a vote is you make a decision. You, I say I like yellow color, and you say you like blue. Now, which is going to be chosen for this house? Blue. blue. Why? Because more people who say blue will get blue, and more people who say yellow will get yellow. It depends. Whichever is the majority. You know what a majority is? girl. You know what a head girl is or a prefect? Yes. yes. I want to be the head girl. Please vote for me. But you know that your best friend is not the right person to be a head girl. <coughs> so what will you do? Will you vote for her or not? No. No. But if you don't vote for her, she'll be very unhappy. So you have secret voting. You go and you quietly vote. Nobody knows who you voted for. You don't need to tell anybody. You need to tell her. So you have done secret voting. So we, when we vote for the government, for the members of parliament, we do secret voting. So all these things have been put into this book, this constitution, how we are to vote, what we are to do, all these things are put into the constitution. So you have, as I told you, you're very important. You must remember that you're the most important, more important than the president of India, more important than the prime minister, because you can throw them all out after five years if they, you don't like them. That's right. If they don't behave, if they don't do well, throw them out. Yeah? So now, to write a book like this is not easy. So they took almost three years to write this book because they wanted it by discussion. Every single clause in this book, they had a discussion. Should the language of India be Hindi 
or English. And they fought and they fought. Somebody wanted English, somebody wanted Hindi. And eventually, it was decided it would be Hindi because the number of votes for Hindi were more, as I told you. So that's how it happened. So then, in this constitution, we have a kind of preamble, which is the beginning. It's one long sentence, which is the constitution preamble. And this book is about that preamble, because it's for children. And if you, and our, our constitution is a fat book. So there's no need to read the whole of it. Just read that one long sentence in the beginning. But it's very complicated. It uses big words like justice, liberty, fraternity, integrity, big words. I mean, even I find it difficult to understand. And my, many of my teachers tell me that it's difficult to understand. And when I was young, we didn't learn it because I was, the British were still here. I was six, 17 years old when the British went. So now you see, so what is written in this, cons this preamble is very important. And that's what I've tried to explain. And there's some very important words in it. Shall I and read yeah, the, yeah, why don't shall you read, I read the yeah, preamble? Okay, now, this is very, uh, this is a very difficult sentence, and she's already told you that it's a very difficult statement. So, if I make mistakes, okay, yeah, okay. No, you read this. Okay, and I add it here. you please don't mark me. Uh, don't give me <laughs> small marks. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Here it is. This is called the Constitution of India's preamble. That's yeah. the first part, and that's the introduction to this huge book of rules called the Constitution. We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic, and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith, and worship, equality of status and of opportunity, and to promote among them all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adopt, enact, and give to ourselves this Constitution. Now, please clap for me. So many big words in this, and I didn't make a single mistake, right? Thank you very much. Okay. So now, in 1977, Three more words were added to this preamble. You know what they are? Secular, another difficult word. Socialist, even more difficult word. And integrity. Three more words were added to this preamble. I'll explain them all to you. Don't get worried. Don't look so worried. Because, and why were they added? Because Indira Gandhi, who was the prime minister, she said that we should be socialist because we should try to do better things for people. And we should be secular we should treat all religions as equal. Because you know, the word secular is different in the English language. But in India, we converted it into every religion should be respected and treated equally. And integrity is to keep us all together. So this was changed. Now, what happened when the constitution was written? No, that's I prefer to stand. I can see them. Uh, uh, <clears throat> when the constitution was written, it has to be signed. Because if something is not signed, then who will say that it's a proper so there were 284 people who signed the constitution because they had been a part of the discussions for two years, 11 months, 17 days. They were discussing and then they found this. And there was someone called Dr. Ambedkar who helped because they, 284 people can't all write. So they decided there should be four or five people who will sit down and write. So they wrote. So when they wrote the constitution, then they had to sign. And who should have signed first? Tell me, who do you think should sign first? The president of India? Yes. But who do you think signed first? The prime minister, Jawaharlal Nehru, rushed there, and he quickly signed it first. And the president was sitting there and wondering what is happening. And then there was no space for the president to sign. And you'll see in this book that here is Jawaharlal Nehru's signature. And the president, poor chap, he had to sign on top, all at an angle above him because that was what happened. So these old people also make lots of mistakes. We old people make lots of mistakes. The only children don't make mistakes. We make lots of mistakes. So even the president and the prime minister, they made a mistake in the main document. So that was it. So now you see what happens after that. You know that, as I said, we are, uh, I'm going to try and explain a few words to you. 
we have a written constitution. That means we've got it written down. Many countries don't have that. Like in England, they don't have a written constitution. And when I told one of the children that they don't have a written constitution, you know what the child said to me? Don't they know how to read and write, the English? <laughs> so it's like that. So now, the constitution has been read to you. And we, the people of India, means all the people of India, including you, including you. And when you're 18, what can you do? Vote. 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 I want to hear that word, vote. And how will you vote? Independently, without anybody else's influence. Is that right? Yes. Yes, yes. OK. So you will vote, and you will vote by secret ballot, so that nobody knows who you voted for. <clears throat> so once you go to vote, you have to vote for the things of the Constitution. Now, do you know what are the first words we used in that, uh, in that preamble? Justice. What is justice? Can anybody tell me what is justice? OK. Now, if your mother and gives more food to your brother than to you, and you're both the same, almost the same age, is that fair or unfair? Unfair. Unfair. That's the word, unfair. Justice means fairness. You must be fair. You tell your mother, don't be unfair. Is that right? Give me yeah. justice. Be just. Be just. Give me the same as you're giving my brother. Be, don't do things. But on the other hand, if your brother is much bigger than you, much taller than you, much uh, older than you, and you are small, then she can give more food to him. Why? Because you can't treat unequal people as equal. You can only treat equal people as equal. That's right. So that's what you have to do. That's the basic thing about justice and equality. Hmm? So I'm going to ask you, uh, OK, let me just do the other concept, then I'll come back to that. Then you know what liberty is? The other word is liberty. You know what liberty means? It means freedom. Can you go to any school you want? Can you go and play in the garden if you want? Yes. But that is freedom. You have the freedom to talk, the freedom to make friends, the freedom to dream. The, the freedom. What do you say? No, it's OK. The freedom to? The freedom to fight. The freedom to fight. Well, where you come to the freedom to fight, that's a little thing. When you have the freedom to fight, you must remember that the other person can also fight. So you have to respect other people's freedom. Whenever you have freedom, you must respect other people's freedom. Otherwise, there'll be confusion and chaos. No? So, so what other freedom do you want? The freedom to practice your religion. The freedom to be allowed to dress the way you want. Yes? Freedom, freedom to ask questions? Yes, the freedom to choose, the freedom to ask questions. You can do all of that. Then that is liberty. And then you come to the question of fraternity. That's the fourth big word. What is fraternity? Fraternity means brotherhood. You must treat everybody like your brother or sister. Just as you love your brother or your sister, you love the person sitting next to you, then you won't fight, you'll share with them equally. That's the important thing. Now I'm going to ask you, coming back to justice, what is justice? This is, a, this is something I'm going to ask you. Listen very carefully, yeah? Because I'm going to ask you, and every answer you give, anybody who gives the answer, all the three answers are right. So you don't have to be afraid. There is one bamboo flute. You know what a flute is? Yeah. A bamboo flute. And there are three children, yeah? And the first child says, give the flute to me, I made it. The second child says, give the flute to me, I know how to play it well. And the third child says, give the flute to me, I have no other, ch I have no other toys. So those of you who will give the flute to the person who made it, put up your hands. Were you all able to hear the question? The question is, there's one flute, three children, well, they One? can't hear it, I see. The back. Uh -huh. They can't hear the back? Some of them. Okay. So the first child says, give me the flute because I made it. The second person says, no, give it to me because I know how to play it very well. And the third child said, no, please give it to me because I don't have any, any, other, toys. any other toys. Now, So those of you who will give the flute to the person who made it, put up your hands. 
How many of you will give it to the first child who made, made the flute, okay. the bamboo okay. flute? Okay. And those of you who will give it to the person who plays it well, put up your hands. All and right. those More of hands. you who will give it to the child who has no toys, put up your hands. Yeah. Right. So now, that's wonderful. You know, this is what you call justice in the social sense of the word. So this because was an open uh, voting. Yeah. This is open voting here because they're putting up their hands. If you ask American children, you know what they say? Give it to the child who made it. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they're very strong on property rights. They, if you ask European children, they say give it to the child who plays it well because they're very strong on proving merit rights. But the Indian children normally say give it to the child who has no toys. And why? Can you tell me why? Yeah. yeah. Tell me why you give it to the child who has no toys. You have to give them a mic or something, so I can hear. <coughs> no, ho hold it, hold it. You can't see otherwise. Because we should give for who don't have toys, because who made it, they can make one more, yes. and they can give for who knows, but who don't have, they cannot get that. Very good, very good answer. Very good answer. You know, normally you ask children and teachers, and the teachers say, give it to the child who plays it well. But that's not a good answer. It's a, it's a correct answer. But the child who plays it well must already have a flute. Otherwise, how does he or she play it? So the child who has no toys is the child to give it because that child will focus on it. Is that right? Yeah. So that's the first. Then I will ask you something else, which is also very important, that I'll tell you a story. Because you, you, know, you, you try to do things, and you don't know whether you're doing it right or wrong. So there's a big forest fire. You know what a fire is? Yeah. And in the forest, there are lots of animals. So they all rush out, go hither and thither, rush out of the fire. And there is. They are all watching, doing nothing. And there is one tiny little bird. And you see that bird is going from one place to the other, one place to the other, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So some, then they notice that she's going to a pond. And in her little beak, she's picking up a few drops of water and putting it on the fire. And some, the animals say to her, what do you think you're doing? And she says, I'm doing my best. So that's what you have to do. Do your best. Maybe it's not enough, but you must do your best. So you have to be the best, but you have to do your best. And that's what every one of us is expected to do with the Constitution, with trying to get the right people there. Do your best. So th this is the way you will develop and the way you will find your own way of how to go forward. So now you come to the question of how do you change things? How do you make things better? Are you happy with everything that's going on in your school? Yes. Yes? yes. Are your teachers here? That's why you're saying yes? <laughs> Are you happy? Yes. yes. Okay. Are you happy with everything that's going on in the country? Yes. yes. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> no? Well, some are good things and some are not so good. So how do you change? Suppose the, the river is very dirty. Should you clean it? Yes. Yes? How do you do that? So much money is being spent on the Ganga River, on this river to clean it, but nothing is happening. Money is getting wasted. Is that right? We should try our best and clean it. Yes, that's right. But now we have been trying to clean it for a long time, but we're not getting it clean. So what do we do? We have to, what they call, innovate. Find new ways of how to clean it. That's right? Because the Constitution also tells us our duties. One of our duties is to keep have a scientific temperament, keep our rivers clean, keep the climate good, respect other people's rights. So that also is taught in the Constitution. So I'll tell you another story, because you like stories? Yeah. OK. So there was an old man, and he was dying. And he had three children. Everybody always seems to have three children in my stories, but that's it. So the first, he says to, he says to his children, I'll give you 1,000 rupees. 1,000 rupees, a lot of money. 1,000 rupees each. But the only condition is 
that when you go, you have to buy something which will fill this room in which I'm, I'm sitting. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Okay, no, sorry. So, fill the room. So, the first child goes and buys grass. Thousand rupees of grass. He brings it along, pushes it into the room, but it won't fill the room. The second child goes and buys cotton. You know what cotton is? He takes it and gets it fluffed up, fluffed up, fluffed up, and brings it there and tries to fill the room and doesn't fill the room. He spent his thousand rupees. And the third child, I hope she's a girl. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I know. I'm just joking. So the third child goes and buys an earthen pot. You know what an earthen pot is? Dia? What do you call it, Dia, in, um, in Kannada? Deepa. Deepa. He goes and buys an earthen pot and brings it and take, puts a little oil and puts a cotton wick and lights it. And the light fills the whole room. So the father is very pleased with him. He's only spent 10 rupees, kept 990 rupees in his pocket, and he's done something which has filled the room. So you have to think of new ways how to do things. Sometimes you're doing it the same old way and it's not happening. So you have to think up new ways. That's very important. Yes? So that's a good story for, for innovation. So that's what you have to do. So <clears throat> do you want me to tell you something more about the Constitution? Or why more? don't we ask them to ask yeah, questions? Just after a few minutes. Okay. Let them five minutes more. So <clears throat> why don't you, uh, I tell you a little bit more about the Constitution, and then I will tell you one more story before we <clears throat> go. Because. Can you read the easy version? Yeah. Huh? Shall I read the simple No, version? I will read that to them <clears throat> before I. So one more story. Uh, oh, let me read this and then I'll tell you this. You, you heard the preamble. You heard the preamble read out to you. Now I'm going to read the preamble in simple language as I made it for children. We, the children of India, having taken a firm decision to make India an independent democratic country that will provide a better life for all Indians, that will not make any religious religions more important than any other, that will respect all religions and beliefs, and will make sure that all of us are treated, what's the word, fairly and honestly, for justice, are free to think and to act and to practice a religion and belief of our choice, that's the freedom, that's the liberty, are equal and are given the same chances to make our lives better, and will encourage among us all love and respect, that's fraternity, for each other, so that we stand united and care for our country. Now give to ourselves this constitution. Now I want to ask you one thing. You know, when we read the constitution, we said that it was on the 26th of November, 1949, that the constitution was adopted. But why, why do we celebrate Republic Day on 26th of January? and not on 26th of November, because 26th of January was a very special day when 20 years earlier, the Indians had dem demanded to be totally independent. And they fixed that date. And they took the constitution which was written and gave it to someone in Bengal called Nand Lal Bose to design pictures around the constitution to make it look beautiful. And that constitution, that original constitution, is kept in the parliament library. And you can go and see it, because they have copies of it. And the original is inside a glass case with temperature control. Because otherwise, paper gets old. It gets broken up, you know, when paper gets very old. So it's kept in a glass case. They opened it for me, because I was writing this book. And they let me touch it. And it's written in English. And then they translated it into Hindi. And then they made a Hindi copy with, with different artists designed it. And they have one printed, printed English copy. So there are the three copies of the original. And they have some copies of that elsewhere. But these are the three original the things that they made. So that is our constitution. It's a very special document. It's the most important book in this country. Because we are ruled by it. Whenever anybody says, Do, this is wrong, that is right, we go to the judge and ask him. And he looks at the Constitution and he says, no, this is the answer. Yeah? So now you're going to ask me questions. And before you ask me any question, you, somebody said we can fight. Now the thing is, you know, fighting is a very difficult process. 
It takes a long time. It uh, hurts people. You have to try and solve things. So I'm going to tell you a small story, which is a true story. Uh, the, in, in, uh, in South India and here, there was two groups of people. And they had an uh, elephant who used to go and worship in the temple. The elephant used to do the worship. And the elef two group, one group said the elephant, when he goes to worship, must wear his tikka. You know what the tikka is? Tikka uh, vertically. And the other group said, no, no, he must wear his tikka horizontally. So they fought and they fought and they fought, but they couldn't agree. So they went to the court. So the first judge heard the case for many days. Lawyers were arguing and money was being spent. And then they decided, no, it should be horizontal. So the other group was very angry. No, no, it has to be vertical. So they went up in appeal. This is a true story, huh? So they went in appeal. And the other judges, the, senior, the appeal court said, no, 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 it should be vertical. So now. One had lost, one had won again. So the group, other group was very angry. So they, in those days, there was no uh, Supreme Court in India. There were court was in England, because it was that time before we were free. So all these lawyers and uh, people all went into a ship, because there were no airplanes in those days. They went in a ship with all their books and their this, and they went to the English judges over there. And they stayed there, and they argued, and they argued, and they argued. And these English judges were reading all this Sanskrit and this and that and all the religious texts and everything. And then what do you think they decided? Both. How? How do you wear both? Oh, maybe they put a vertical, but then the patterns might be horizontal. <laughs> oh, you mean like a cross, a vertical and a horizontal. <laughs> well, then nobody will be happy. Because the vertical people will say, we are not happy. The horizontal people will say, we are not happy. What is this? Some new thing you produce? Not a cross. Huh. But the pa patterns maybe in the tikka might be maybe um, oh, no. nine uh, Well, that is a maybe a way, but I think nobody would be happy. So now, yes, that young girl there. Just, I can't hear you, so you have to speak. They didn't put anything at all. Because they didn't put anything at all, because everybody was fighting. Didn't put anything, but then nobody would be happy. <laughs> That's also the point. So what the judges decide. Oh, yeah, one more here. Yeah. For who, which elephant they like, their own elephant they can put. Wow. What did she say? For their own elephant, they can put whatever they want. No, whatever but there's only like. one elephant that goes to worship on the worshiping day. So one they can put goes. two. Huh? <laughs> you have two elephants. Well, that's also. Now, you know what the judges decided? Shall I tell you? Yes. You want to know? Or oh, somebody else wants to say something. Yeah, okay. When they close the elephant's eyes, how can the elephant go and worship? Close the elephant's eyes. No, but the tikka, we are only talking about the, the groups that wanted the tikka. They are the important things. They are controlling the elephant. Okay. So the judges said, for three days in the week, the elephant will bear the tikka vertically. For three days in the week, the elephant will bear the tikka horizontally. And for the seventh day, the elephant will rest. You must give the elephant some rest. You people are making the elephant work too hard. Maybe the elephant so is having a bath that <laughs> day and cannot have anything. So, that, so that's how you, how you sort out things. That's how you me mediate. You don't fight, you mediate. And if they had decided that in the beginning, all that money and going up, up, up would stop. No. How much time do I have? Finished. Okay. Yes, now I'm questions. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Now you, I'm going to, uh, you're going to ask questions. And then I'm going to end myself with something for you. OK. Now tell me. All right. Before we start the questions, I'd like you to know that the books are available at the author co signing counter. That's the English So books. whoever wants to buy the books in English, Kannada, Hindi, uh, Urdu too, they're available. And uh, Justice Leela said we'll sign it for you. All right. Uh, now for the questions. You can yeah. ask anything to do yeah. with the Constitution with the rules for the yeah. government, for the people. Yeah, me. But the horizontal or vertical, for who will put first, they'll fight for that. <laughs> when you say who will we'll fight for that? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Three days for one and three days for the other, doesn't matter. Next week you can make it the other way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> because when you get an equal time, you're right. People fight for everything, you're right. But you have to be calm and sort it out, yes. I are there 
three colors on flag. You know why there are three colors? No? Somebody will tell you? One of, yes, one of the children will tell you better than me. Come on, tell why there are three colors on the flag. You stand there. Orange for bravery and white for peace and greenery for farm. Very good. Very good. No, I don't need any water. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Okay, one more. Did we get freedom in the midnight of 14th or 15th midnight? Couldn't get the question. Just tell me the question. I can't understand. Did we get freedom in the midnight of 14th or 15th morning? We got freedom on the night 14th. 12 o'clock at the midnight hour. That's why uh, Jawaharlal Nehru says the tryst with destiny at the midnight hour. So it's at the 12 o'clock. It was the 14th night and the 15th morning, but it was 12 o'clock. So that's why we got freedom. And when did we get our constitution? What did I tell you? 26th of January. That's why Republic Day is so important. Yes. Another question? Why can't we... What? What did you say? Please tell me. Why can't we see the book and solve that problem, Akka? Which problem? Something problem. No, there, there is pro they are, you are showing interest in the book. So you ask this, may not be, the answer may not be in this book. A, a problem like, why is the flag orange, white and green? Or uh, when was, was it at 12 o'clock midnight? Of course it was at 12 o'clock midnight, but okay. So any other questions about the constitution? Jailalita, Jailalita is uh, prime minister of, uh, chief minister of Tamil Nadu. Why is she coming to Bangalore? She's coming to, she's, uh, She's coming to Bangalore because her, she has a case against her. And the case could not be heard in Tamil Nadu because she was the chief minister. And you don't want uh, her influence to be on the judges. And she also didn't want it there. So the case was transferred to <coughs> Bangalore, to, to Karnataka, to here. And the decision is coming today. Whether she made more money than she should have. Put it yes. like that. Did she take, was she corrupt and what did she take a lot of money and hid it, hid it quietly behind when she was doing her work or not? So that is the judgment that is coming today. So that is why she's here today because her judgment will, the judgment will come today. And we decided whether she took the money or didn't take the money. She made the money or she didn't make the money. That's why it's very important. So you have to be satyamev jayate, always honest. And truth will always prevail. That's what we hope. There's a question here. Yeah. There's a question. Yeah. Why is the flag hoisted up? What? What did she say? Why is the flag hoisted, hoisted up? up? The flag is hoisted up. You know, the British flag is brought down and the Indian flag is hoisted up. And once our flag is hoisted up on special occasions, because you then see under which government or which rule we are. And in many countries, people keep flags. You go, if, I, if I go to, when I, mean, I went to America, I found all the houses had their flag, and there was an Indian family, and they had their Indian flag on top of their house. So you knew that that's your country flag. It makes you feel very good. In India, at one stage, we were not allowed to put up our flag just for the sake of putting up our flag uh, every day in the month. But there was a man called Mr. Jindal who fought in the court and said we have a right to put up our flag in our houses if we want to. And we were given that right. The courts gave him that right. And we all have a right. You can hang up a flag on top of your house if you want to. And be proud that you're an Indian and this is your flag and you respect it. There's a question there. The question. Yeah. It is possible to change our continental rules according of the con convenience of the people. Please answer. Is answer. it possible to change the rules of our... Read it again. Read yeah. it again. According yeah, it is, yes, it is possible. It is possible to change our <coughs> continental rules according of the convenience of the people. Yes, you can change the rules. It's a difficult process because it's the main book. You know, you can change the rules of the laws you make much easier. But when you want to change the rules of the constitution, 
it's a very long, difficult process. And just now we are trying to change some rules of the Constitution. It's got to be decided not only by the people in the center, but every state has to vote. And more than half the states have to vote in favor of that change. So it's a complicated process, but you can change it. But there are some things which are called basic, we can't change. And that is, we are a democracy. We can't become a monarch. Suddenly somebody comes to them and says, I'm a king, and I will rule this country. You can't do that. You can only be a democracy. There are certain things you can't change. You can't say, we'll abolish all the judges. You can't say that because judiciary is very important. You know, there are certain things you can't change. It's called basic structure of the constitution. Um, break you can't change that. But other things you can change. You're right. One question. Yeah. When British were in non... Uh, yeah. When British was in uh, violence and why did uh, Gandhi go in uh, non-violence? Uh, British were not <laughs> that violent. They were trying to push us because when we were doing these things, but Gandhi realized that fighting is not the way. We'll never get the, a big country like this to be freed if we just fight. And fighting means what? More uh, an eye for an eye. Somebody will kill me, I will kill you, you will kill the other person. Is that the way to go? Gandhiji said, no, ahimsa, non-violent. And he has taught not only Indians, not only us, but he taught many countries who went the non-violent way. Where is the real Indian constitution kept? When did the constitution come? I, I told you. On? Huh? Oh, where can you see the real, old, the real constitution? In the parliament library in Delhi, you can see the real constitution. They may not open the main one for you because it's under temperature control and they open it for very, very few people. But there's a, there are copies of it, exactly as it is, which you can see. And you can also see it in some other libraries, like the National Library in Calcutta, the in India International Library, the Jawaharlal, uh, the, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru uh, mu mu Museum and Library in Delhi. I'm sure there must be here also, there must be somewhere where you can see a copy of that constitution, all with the drawings and everything. There's a picture of one of them here. I've put in a photograph of the first page of the preamble with the flowers and all around it. So you can all see right. the One quick question. And from then I'm going to say something at the end. So. Uh, when the constitution was formed, it was supposed to be fair um, to everyone in the country. So um, when they were writing the constitution, did they refer to any external documents? Or they looked at all the constitutions in the world that were in existence. They looked at the Irish constitution, the American constitution, the British didn't have a constitution, but they looked at their Magna Carta. In fact, the, the work done was so tremendous, as one of the best constitutions, was so tremendous, they traveled, uh, Benigal Rao traveled and went to the different countries, spoke to people who had drafted constitutions, and they tried to take the best from all the constitutions and put it in there. Compile it. Yeah, compile it in the way that is suitable for India. And uh, I think it's a very good constitution, and uh, our preamble is wonderful, because that's the essence of the constitution. Yes, that's the last question? Oh. Yes. Okay, the last question. And then I will <coughs> get into the side. Before, before all this, how did the Britishers come to India? How did the British? They came here as traders, you know, they came to sell goods, buy and sell the goods, and slowly, slowly, because we were so many groups of people, with small states, we were fighting with each other. So they just helped us, you know, what did they say? They just started overruling us. Because we were fighting with each other, if we had stood together, they would not have been able to do it, yeah? Okay, shall we end? Just one last question. Okay, one change the rules Best. this okay. time. Yeah. Were the rules changed after the 1979 emergency? With some amendments was made, 1976-77 uh, emergency, <coughs> yes. Some amendments were made because one of the things that happened during the emergency was that they called an emergency when they said that there was some disturbance in the country. An emergency is called when there's a war or there's an internal great difficulty internally. But there was not really a great difficulty, and they called this emergency. Indira Gandhi called it for an emergency. So it was very wrongly done, because she called for an emergency, middle of the night, she didn't consult anybody, all kinds of things. So they made some new rules that such a situation cannot happen again. That's it? Okay. Now I'm going to end, and what we're going to do, at the end of the book, there's a very short poem. 
The poem talks about justice, liberty, equality, and brotherhood, the four important things I told you about. So we are going to recite that poem. But before I recite it, there are two words in that poem which are difficult. One is diversity. You know what diversity means? Diversity is like... Yeah, I mean to say it louder. Does anybody know what diversity means? Yeah, tell me. Okay, diversity is like when you're... Where's your mic? Diversity is what? Diversity is like uh, when it's different and very... Um, it's like different and it's very different and many people, many types of things. Yeah, you're right. It's like some people are short, some people are tall. Some people sing, uh, dance Bharat Natyam, some people dance Odissi. Some people, some people speak in English, some people speak in Hindi. Some people speak in Kannada. So there's so many kinds. Some people are Hindu, some people are Christian. Some people are Muslim, some people are Jain. So that's diversity and that's a wonderful thing that we have in India. It's the most wonderful thing about India that we have all these different things. You can dress in a different way, I'm dressing in a different way. So we can do that, and we are allowed to do all these things. This is diversity, and this is the big, great beauty of India. And there's another, another word that is difficult, which is called unified. You know what unified means? You unite together. Always stay together, then you will be able to be strong. You know that story about the sticks? Do you know the story about the sticks? Yes, yes you all know the story. And because you were together, they couldn't break the sticks. That's right. That's unity. Now, I'm going to say the first line, and then you're going to say it after me. Let's be equal, just, and free. Let's be equal, just, and free. Strong in our diversity. Strong in our diversity. Free in thought and free in prayer. Free in thought and free in prayer. Why are the men not speaking about the back? Men have to also speak. Uh, free in thought and free in prayer. Free to dream and free to dare. Free to dream and free to dare. Free to love and free to care. Free to love and free to care. Let's be equal, just and free. Let's be equal, just and free. Strong in our diversity. Strong in our diversity. Let's be equal, free and just. Let's be equal, free and just. Unified in love and trust. Strong to lend the weak a hand. Strong to help and understand. Strong to build a happier land. Let's be equal, free and just. Unified in love and trust. Thank you very much for giving me this chance to speak to you all. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justice Leela said, uh, standing in the sun and answering us uh, all these questions. Uh, thank you all for being such a great audience. If you want the book to be signed by uh, Leela said, please go to the author's section there, somewhere there, right? Uh, you have to go to amphitheatre.